Well, what's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? This is Bishop Tommy L. Williams, senior, better known as Dr. Pat Pastor of the Keys to the Kingdom International Ministries, right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you. We pray all is well with you. Not you know how we do it. We believe God all the way to the end. What is the end? Until we receive what we believe in God for. Praise God. We just thank God for you. Come on, join in with us as we are going forth here on to uh, tonight. Uh, so come on here. Welcome to Supernatural Night Church. Uh, praise God. We are in a great study. And why are we in debt? Praise God. And we're uh, just still laying out some things here as we are preparing for a very exciting upcoming year. Praise God. Before we get started, hit that share button for me. And I certainly appreciate that. Go on, sweetheart. Bless you. Bless you. Let me hit this share button on this thing. Yeah. Invite some people in. Come in and join with us. For God. Yeah, God is yet good to us. I pray that you you are blessed. Yeah, y'all come on in here. I want to help you with a thing or two. There we go. Come on. And I know we're in a time where we are we are looking for some deep stuff. There we go. I found me here. Praise God. Hold on. Let me get my, get my like the old folks. Let me get my ducks in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Y'all come on in. And I pray that you have been blessed. I'm telling you, we're um, we still in our wilder situation. Low pressure uh, is doing a little bit better than it has been since friday uh praise god and yeah but we we thank god um uh, for what yet uh he um is yet doing no, we're not complaining we're just thankful uh praise god we're just thankful that it could be worse and um and it's all gonna be well and we were looking uh so we did find out that they are working in our area so we're kind of looking for, uh, hopefully, by they couldn't give us a definite time frame of when things are going to be back working, but but they are working in the area. So, well, we, you know, hey, just going to be patient in the Lord uh, on all of this. And and uh, so we're just going to believe God, and that God is going to make some things happen, sustain us, praise God. And uh, uh, hopefully in a day or two, everything be back to normal. And uh, um, so I also heard uh, for Xfinity customers, uh, there's a possibility tomorrow that uh, they're going to shut down internet services. Well, not just internet service, all their services will be down. Uh, hopefully they can get everything done uh, to tomorrow. Uh, from my understanding, I don't know if they're going to do the whole city uh, at one time, but I know they're going to start tomorrow. And they're supposed to be upgrading the system. And, of course, y'all do know, with the, with, after the upgrade, y'all do know they are planning on uh, raising prices. Oh, Lord. Uh, so they're going to be doing that. Uh, they're going to be raising prices as well. Uh, they're supposed to be having another level of, of Internet service that gets more speed or whatever, how it is. I don't know what the price is going to be, but that's why they're doing it. A major overhaul rate and it's supposed to be done tomorrow uh so we'll see uh so if it's if things are working we'll be on live tomorrow because i pray and hope so god will be doing bible study on tomorrow as well um but anyway but as long as they be up uh we're, we're gonna be fine praise god all, all right y'all come on let's get ready uh to do this uh 
Let me pull my notes up. And uh, I told you we're going to dive into this parable. Um, Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 through 35. We're going to dive into it and uh, kind of dissect it. Um, and see what um, basically uh, this parable that Jesus uh, did, uh, the parable of the debtor and his creditors. So we, like I said, we are, uh, this is uh, a project I'm getting ready to do for our church. And I decided to just, uh, just to have, give y'all some, uh, some highlights of it. Uh, praise God that we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing this all year long. So we're going to have. Uh, some different segments within the year uh, working on being uh, debt free. Okay, so we want to empower the church and empower the people. Uh, and so those are things we're looking forward to. So I'm just sharing some of the information to you uh, that we're going to be doing. So let's get into this. Um, the creditors will, um, number one, this is the thing. So this is some things that I want you to understand that's going to help you. Uh, uh, deal with your debt very quickly. Not get out of debt quickly, but deal with it. Now, remember, we got to have what change of mindset. Okay, got to have a change of mind, uh, and it's important that we uh, that we do that. Okay, it's important. Uh, uh, anytime change comes, if that don't change, there will be no change. Okay. Uh, if your mind don't change. Uh, there will be no change. I want you to grab that. Okay. If the mind don't change, um, there will be no change. Okay. All right. Give you that again. I want you to put that in the chat. If your mind don't change, there will be no change. Okay. If the mind don't change, there will be no change. Put that in the chat for if your mind don't change, there will be no change. Uh, a lot of people try to bring change or to force change to come or uh, I guess another way I can look at, I can kind of present it to you. Uh, we try to expect change to come, but uh, but our thinking stays the same. So it's going to be very difficult uh, for uh, change to manifest in your life if you have the same way of thinking. Okay. So as a man think if it's his heart, so is he. And, and so remember we talked about last night uh, that how we got to change the way that you think about debt. Okay, you got to change the way you think about debt. Now, I know this ain't shouting stuff. I know this this might be boring, okay, uh, to many. But when the pressure of them debts get on you, <laughs> uh, this is kind of the lessons you're gonna you're gonna revert back to. Okay, so so uh, get get this. Like I said, I put my disclaimer. I am not an expert in this area. I have some knowledge, uh, just. From, from business experiences and things of nature there and from my own personal life experiences, okay? But I'm not an expert, not claim to be. Just sharing with some things because I'm dealing with the spiritual and the mental aspect uh, of dealing uh, uh, dealing with uh, being in debt, okay, and getting out. So we're going to deal with that. Then, of course, I'm going to bring in experts to deal with the numbers and all those different things there and different strategies and stuff like that, okay? So uh, this is going to be a collaboration of me and, and some other people that I bring in who who walks at a different uh, level of knowing in certain areas that I don't, which I don't have no issue in to uh, sh uh, sharing the platform. Uh, praise God. Uh, but but we're going to dive into this parable that Jesus put. And so I want you all to understand this thing now. Uh, this is biblical, everything I'm giving you. Because uh, the world system is not designed to. Uh, to prosper us is designed to keep us in bondage okay so let's look at look at this matthew chapter 18 
uh, verse 23 through 35. Okay, that's what we're going to utilize. Okay, this is what we're going to utilize uh, in our teaching uh, probably today and tomorrow that we're going to dissect this. Okay, we're going to dissect this in, in such a way. Um, I, um, I got some great things coming for the, uh, 2023. Boy, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're we are expanding. I put it like that. We are, we are expanding uh, in a whole lot of other areas and platforms. So we're going for it. We're gonna go for it. All right. So let's let's so see. Can we help you deal with debt uh, very quickly? See, can we deal with it? Okay. So number one, the creditors will ask for his money someday. Okay. Someday they going you're gonna have to pay up. OK, we can come up with all kind of uh, schemes and gimmicks and and uh, delay tactics and all of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, the creditors going to ask for for their money. OK. So. Um, so Matthew chapter uh, 18, verse 23 says this, and this is the new living um, translation. OK, it says, therefore. The kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who have borrowed money from him. Okay. All right. So let's look at it. Like I said we're going to dive into this. We're going to dissect uh, this parable. So I'm going to read to you again. Matthew chapter 18, verse 23. All right. New Living uh, Translation says this. Therefore. The kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. Okay. So in other words, he's calling for a reckoning. Then to reconcile those accounts. Okay. And that time is going to come where we're going to have to deal with that. Okay. So the person or entity uh, that you owe will one day balance their accounts, okay? And if you got a checking account, what have you, uh, you should do that on a regular basis to keep up uh, with with your uh, with your finances and your account, and uh, you should be able to keep up with that and uh, reckoning your account, okay? Uh, and so you can keep that balance. But watch this here. Uh, they will come and ask for uh, what you owe. All right. And then and you got to have that in mind because every what uh, uh, every month we get an invoice <laughs> from those that we owe. Right. OK, uh, they, they remind you I was out uh, paying some bills today. OK. And because I don't want to get no uh, creditor calling. All right. So even if it seems that they are not disturbing. Uh, uh, that uh, they are not very disturbing at the moment, but be be aware that they will someday. Okay, they're gonna start putting more and more pressure on you, especially if you're not making payments on time or making the payments. Okay, and, and we're not gonna get into uh, the real reasons why you're not. You, we know life do happen. Okay, circumstances do come up. All right. Now uh, this is a conversation that needs to uh, happen, y'all. Uh, because I know we shout a whole lot, but but the reason why a lot of, a lot of us are shouting is because of situations that we are in. Okay, we need miracles, we need breakthroughs, we need turnarounds, and and and, and so we got all these situations that's that's happening, uh, um, uh, that's going on. So we got to um, uh, we, we, we got to get some things in order. Okay. Um. So so, so watch this. So you got to make plans, okay, to repay, uh, repay before the ask, all right? You got to, you got to, you got to, uh, instead of waiting on them asking, we got to, we got to make plans uh, to repay them, okay? Because uh, they may ask for their money the way it will affect your peace of mind, okay? Uh, a lot of times they start putting pressure on you, start threatening you, uh, taking things away from you. 
uh, uh, you know, all those things. And now they start adding what pressure, start uh, adding pressure to you. Okay, start adding pressure to you uh, uh, in, in such a way. And now it's very disturbing and very uncomfortable. Okay, very disturbing and very uncomfortable. So, uh, I want you to I want you to put this in the chat. I believe in miracles. Okay, I believe in miracles. Okay, and, and the reason why I'm, I'm bringing that up is because I want you to be able to uh, to grab hold to this. We believe in miracles, and we believe that God can what touch the hearts of your creditors to cancel your debt. Oh, that, 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 that's some crazy faith, uh, uh, but but you can believe it. And I don't know how many of you all who be, are listening uh, to me now or be watching replay of this. I don't know how many of you all ever had debt counsel. We're talking about you getting uh, uh, notifications in the mail, the email, or you getting uh, 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 letters in the mail, uh, uh, letters in the mail, uh, uh, letting you know that, uh, your account has been paid in full. All all of those things, uh, uh, those things happens, uh, and, and that's the hand of God. Okay. Uh, now watch this, and so we've seen this type of miracles uh, happen many times. And during my time in ministry, what we have seen it, you know, I never have claimed to be uh, what's going on, Pastor Lee. Uh, I uh, I have not really been to be one of those who uh, you know in prosperity anointing and and, and excuse me uh, food from that fish <laughs> oh Jesus okay uh, prosperity anointing uh, things of that nature there but you know but it flows with us okay uh, we only move in it when the Holy Spirit uh, uh, leads us and guides us in it okay. But, but watch this here. But it should not be the first thing that you uh, think concerning debt. D don't just wait to think it's so critical. Only thing that you're uh, expecting is a miracle from God. We don't. Uh, uh, oh, we don't want you to. Uh, 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 oh, 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 we don't want you to just only, uh, only um, expect that. Okay, and then ne never handle the business because we want you to want you to get the right mindset. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 37, verse 21. Proverbs 37, uh, uh, verse 21. It says, the wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. Jesus. So, so, so uh, listen to how the Bible is describing those who, who refuses to pay. Uh, he calls calls you wicked. Mm, I, I don't know about you. I don't want that labor on me. Okay? Because only a wicked person hates to repay their debts. Mm. Come on now. A wicked person hates to repay their debts. Ah, oh, that idiot of course. You know, uh, I'm, I know I'm not the only one that we got people who owe us. And um, not only do they owe us, but they avoid us. <laughs> they, they, they do the hide and go seek game. And and when you see them or uh, when you try to talk to them, you're not even uh, referencing or in, uh, have in mind what they owe you. Uh, because you feel they ain't, they hadn't paid you back by now. We know they still living, doing this, and doing that, and probably doing some things better than what uh, uh, than uh, what we are doing. But then, yet because of they know that they owe us, and so they they uh, took a chance to to damage the relationship. Uh, Y'all do know uh, this thing is about relationship, right? Damage the relationship because they refused to to pay. But the Bible calls them um, uh, wicked. Lord help us. So, 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 so watch, watch this. Watch. I ain't gonna dwell on it too much. I want nobody get mad. Why? Why are you thinking about somebody? 
All right, and watch this. Here. So our legal system allows individuals and businesses in suffering to uh, recuperate themselves under the protection of bankruptcy laws, okay? And unfortunately, I, I can be transparent with you. I have, uh, in my lifetime, I have filed bankruptcy twice. And, you know, when we first started this year, I told you uh, I did it um, um, in uh, getting bad advice. What's going on, Ms. Rosemary? Bless you. Yeah, James, I say hello. Uh, and so I did it uh, uh, in, in uh, bad advice. Uh, and it's something that I deemed that I uh, prayed that I'd never be in a position to do again or choose to do it. That'd be the very last, 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 last result uh, that I won't do that again. Okay. On okay. to my personal business wise, uh, I might, if, if, it, if it came down to that, uh, because I know how I know how I have more knowledge and wisdom now than I did before. Okay, so 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 watch, watch this here. So um, bankruptcy is designed to um, to help you uh, reestablish yourself, get on your feet. Uh, but uh, Lord help us. Some people have used uh, we have misused even this law. Okay. Uh, some people uh, use it as just a way of life, you know, get this, get this, and then defy bankruptcy. And I get, you know, uh, uh, so they found little loopholes and they worked through it in Canada. But that's what it should not be, okay? Uh, abusing even this year. And so it became, even though it was set up and established to be an assistance when things uh, have gotten out of control or when things have, uh, have you know, went uh, in the wrong direction for you. And it was there to kind of help you regroup. But uh, even this had been abused. Okay. So uh, unfortunately, this does not apply in all cases. So as a believer, uh, we have an obligation to repay our creditors to the best of our ability. So you should always want to make sure that your your intentions is to, to repay. Okay. Uh, do the best you can. You might not be able to pay. Uh, on time all the time, but but make sure that you pay because you got that's how you get out of the debt. All right. So, so so in other words, you gotta make the effort to repay your debts. I want you to put that in the chat for me. Make the efforts to repay your debt. So y'all owe me money, uh pay me. <laughs> ah, Jesus, I just having fun, just having fun with you. Okay. Uh all of us sometimes get behind and, and get uh, uh, slack in these areas, but but we do need to take it serious and and, and you know, hey, you might not be able to do it right now, but when you get it, okay, when you do get it, uh, take care of the business, okay. All right, number two, your debts affect your family, okay. Your debt affects your family. What's going on with my, with my phone here? Okay, your your debt affects your family. So number one, um, number one was uh, the credit ask for their money someday. They're gonna ask to be repaid. So don't don't. Uh... Oh Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Look, I got a bill. I got I'm gonna gotta pay as soon as I get off here. <laughs> I just thought the Holy Spirit got look. Lord Jesus, I just looked at the calendar. Oh God. Okay, I gotta, gotta uh, make a payment. Jesus. Okay, see. I thought I put it in my phone. I wonder. Mm, mm, mm. You know what? Um Jesus. There's so much going on with all this. What? Oh Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Hey, I thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, number two. Your debt will affect your family. All right. So uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 24 or 4 and 25. This is New Living uh, Translation. Matthew chapter 18, verse 24 and 25. So in the process, one of his de debtors was brought, uh, brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay. So his master ordered that he be sold. Watch this. And with his wife, his children, and everything he owned. Wow. 
pay the debt to pay the debt so uh watch this because this parable is something else it's a blessing though but uh, watch this so he owed millions of dollars and couldn't pay didn't say he didn't want to pay but he couldn't pay come on how many of us are find ourselves in those circumstances sometimes it's not that we don't want to pay but you couldn't pay God, come on here. And so, sometimes we made some bad decisions, uh, um, you know, and then we just overdid it. Come on, you know, you know, God, that, and it, it just falling in line with teaching this because I know uh, many are going to feel the effects in by next week uh, when next month come in, them bills, them invoices, and, and, and uh, you know, all, all those things will come in. Then when you begin to, to uh, reconcile your bank account and all you see, oh, I hope, and we pray that you don't, be in overdraft, nothing like that, because of uh, overspending, okay? And so sometimes we find ourselves not being able to pay, but not because we don't want it, all right? So notice that the consequences of this man's debt were also stressed to his family. The creditor's punishment also extended to the wife. Wow. And the children who probably wasn't even aware of the debt. So, so our debt, it don't just affect us. Okay. It affects our family. All right. Your debt can affect your family and generations. And sometimes we are in generational debt. Y'all come on. Even if you die and you owe a whole lot of folks. Once you, once, once you die, uh, them creditors are still coming. They, they want to get paid. Come on. And, and they'll try to get a bit, everything they can get from the estate. Try to get all the insurance money, try to get anything that has any value to, to try for them to recoup uh, whatever you owe. Okay? And this can be generations. All right. They do not end with, uh, uh, with you alone. Your debts don't, it's not just for you alone. Okay. I want you to put that in chat. Your debts, uh, your debts are not for you alone. Mm -mm. They ain't going to just end up with you. They ain't going to just stop with you. Uh, uh, if if I owe somebody money, whether a bill or a person, individual, uh, and and if the Lord decides to take me on home, but but y'all hold up, it's going to be a minute. I got work to do. I got to finish up assignments. But just using it as an illustration, I know my wife, don't be, don't be fussing. I'm just using it as an illustration. Uh, uh, now, now watch this, is that... Uh, Sometimes they won't even wait till I'm in the ground. They're going to be trying to contact my wife and try to get paid. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I showed Miss Bishop, but you know, uh, before he died, he said he was going to pay me the money that he owed me. And, and and she might not even be aware that I owed you anything or how much it was. You know? And I just got to go out whatever you said. <laughs> Y'all come on here. See, uh, uh, all of a sudden the bills start coming and, and owe this and owe that. And before you know it, the uh, uh, majority of the insurance money be gone. So uh, your debt has a way of affecting uh, or affecting the entire family. Okay. So think about the stress that you'll be putting your family through as a result of lingering debts, because one, um, they, they're already trying to figure out how they're going to live, especially if you were the, uh, uh, the main uh, uh, income that flows in the family. So now they're going to try to figure out how are we going to live, what we're going to do. And now everybody trying to pay, everybody want this and this and that and all, all those things there. Um, and so that's why uh, getting insurance, as a matter of fact, man, wife, when we're working on some things now, uh, increasing our insurance. Okay. I wanted to make sure I'm increasing my level of insurance, life insurance on me. So uh, just in case anything do happen, that she won't have to struggle. You know, uh, at least be able to live comfortable uh, until uh, my income is replaced. Okay. So you guys start thinking uh, ahead of time. I know most folks don't want to think about it, but I don't want to think about that. But that's a conversation that needs to be had. 
because everybody, we can't do a GoFundMe for everybody that dies. I know this is a hard conversation, but, but I'm just telling you, uh, you, you can't, you, you ain't gonna be able to do it. Everybody ain't, everybody ain't gonna get um, a whole, uh, uh, thousands of dollars uh, just because you died and go go fund me, okay? So we can't depend on that. We gotta make sure we got the insurance, making sure that that our family uh has something to live on uh for a while we know it ain't gonna be laughing no lifetime uh because they also got to have uh money management and then you know uh everybody in the wood uh gonna come out all of a sudden gonna want to be uh a friends or all of a sudden family members you ain't seen in years gonna start showing up because they think they can get some or, or uh you know your siblings are now all of a sudden uh, got this need and got that need because they think that you have accumulated a certain amount of money, and so now all of a sudden they uh, uh, they want a uh, uh, blood is thicker than water, I, I which I has up tonight, uh, you know, and not and they don't care because it's selfishness. Uh, uh, that they, they don't care whether uh, this family got to live now. Uh, this all the income they have until the income is replaced or having some steady income coming in. All right, so so these things is important, okay? So unfortunately, after uh, after his death, his creditors didn't give up, okay? The Bible tells the story of a very good and godly prophet who died in debt, okay? He was a good man, better thing than what I was talking about. I'm just, I'm just gonna show you in scripture, but he died in debt. Did y'all hear me? He died in debt. Uh, now I, I know this ain't gonna make you shout. Oh, let me go find somebody that gonna make uh, that they're gonna touch my shundo. Look, <laughs> I ain't trying to touch your shundo. I'm trying to touch your finances. Uh, so so we want to remove that canker worm, that uh, caterpillar, and that and locust, uh, 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 and the pommel worm from eating up uh, uh, your harvest. Y'all come on. But he died in debt. Ah, that is your course. He was a godly and righteous man. So you can be in tongues, pick up, put him down. You can do the right thing all the time. But he didn't have the wisdom to deal with his debts. I want you to put this in the chat. You need wisdom to deal with your debts. You need wisdom to deal with your debts. He did not have wisdom. To deal with his debt. He was a, a godly righteous man. I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take you in scripture. Let's hold on. So unfortunately, after his death, his creditors didn't get uh, didn't give up. They still coming. They they try to take the car. Y'all come on. Uh uh, uh yes, they will. They try to take the car. You think you got another car, then hit the credit or something out? Well, uh, uh who's gonna make the payments? I mean, in death certificate. Now that they, they just won't get paid. So they came to take his two innocent sons as collateral. So, so now his boys are gonna have to work off that debt. But for the uh the timely actions of his wife, watch this, his innocent children would ha have suffered uh a lot. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 through 7. I'm gonna take my time with it. Kings chapter 4, verse 1 through 7. Yeah, this is going to bless somebody because I want you to see this. See, see, this is one of the things that we fail to realize even uh, in the church. We, we preach and teach about both getting the blessing and, and, and the blessing of the Lord is upon them and, and all this. In, uh, see, uh, like we said previously, uh, money issue. Lord help us. Come on, money is not the issue. You getting it is not the issue. You getting the bag is not the issue. So watch this. Uh, watch this miracle happens. So 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 through 7. This amplified version. It says, now one of the wives of the man, uh, of the son of the prophet. Come on, the sons of the prophet. They daddy was a prophet 
uh, cried out to Elisha for help. Uh, God help us. Uh, saying, watch this, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know, watch this, that your servant reverently feared the Lord. So he was in good standing. But the credit is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves in payments for a loan. Jesus. Verse 2 says, Elisha said to what shall I do for you? Tell me what do you have a buy you in the house? Boy, this a this a sermon. Hey, uh, that it don't go see. Boy, that's a, that's a, it's a word in here. Uh, 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 watch this. Uh, she said, uh, your uh, maidservant has nothing in the house except a small jar of oil, olive oil. No, verse 3. Then he said, go borrow containers from all your neighbors, empty containers, and and now just uh, not just a few. Uh, then you shall go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour out the oil you have into these containers. And you shall set aside each one uh, when it is full. So he giving her, giving her divine instructions. Lord, have mercy. So watch verse five. So she left him and the door behind her and her sons, and they were bringing her the containers as she poured the oil. When the containers were all full, she said to her son, now bring me another container. And he said to her, there is not one left. Oh, God, I feel the word. Hey, Jesus. Uh, uh, watch this here. Then the oil stopped multiplying. Sucks. Uh, uh, did, did somebody hear that? Oh, God. Then the oil stopped multiplying. Boy, it's a word that I'm going to hit. Y'all hold on. I, I got to write this down. I got I got to write it down. I got to write this down. God, give me something to write on. Okay, this this will do here. The God, hold on, y'all. I'm sorry, but you know I gotta get it when it's fresh. Lord Jesus, see that will verse. Uh, verse six. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, I, I, I'm back with you. Let me finish reading. Boy, okay. Then the oil stopped multiplying. Now, 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 now watch this because I need you to grab that. It didn't say that it ran out of oil. The Amplified says, then the oil stopped multiplying. To watch this, out of her obedience in following the instructions that the prophet gave her. Boy, oh God, but that word downloading in me too. God help me. How they did it, okay? See, okay, Jesus. And and watch this because she was obedient. That was a a supernatural knowing of increase. Watch this here. Fell on the oil. Oh God. Hey, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh boy. See, see that word download that boy. <laughs> yeah. Shucks. Oh God. Uh, watch this verse number seven. It says, Then she came and told the man, watch this here, of God. He said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons can live on the rest. Oh. Okay, I, I ain't gonna do it. 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 I'm, I'm, oh God, I'm see. I'm, I'm gonna get it. I'm, I got. I'm gonna preach that. Lord Jesus, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Oh. oh. See, see, when you follow divine. When you follow divine instructions from the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. 
through whoever he's using, whether it's a, a financial counselor, an accountant, uh, uh, even your man or woman, God, just because he's not an expert don't mean God won't give them divine wisdom to guide you. A law mercy. And, and and when you follow those instructions in, in obedience, God, that, that, that there's a, a, a supernatural anointing of multiplication or increase ah, that'll fall. God, help me here. They'll fall on your seed. Okay. Jesus. Watch this. Here. So, so as someone who have been through terrible experiences with that, I don't know about y'all, but I have. Ah, God, help me here. And I can tell you about, about the pressure and stress that that uh that debt invites uh, upon us. Uh come on, is not what God wanted us to live with. You know, I've been in the personal life and in ministry. Uh, I was so stressed out one while. Uh, I'm, and, and and people didn't know. See, see, you know, we're pastor, we carry a load that people don't can't imagine. Uh man, if you ain't called for this thing, don't don't, don't try to grab hold to this thing. <laughs> Come on. You got to be called to this. I'm telling you, a Lord have mercy. Uh, I had so much stress. I had so much stress upon me. And I ministry was doing the way, but uh 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 the financial um low had become great. Uh and it almost took me out. I ain't said took us out. Uh because folks would would have been joined another ministry and went on and did their thing. Yeah, y'all know how to do us. We only good as long as they can get what they need from us. <laughs> when we no longer can produce, they move on to the next one. I'm just telling y'all what it is. That's reality. That's truth. And uh we're going through ministry booming. God, I mean, man, uh, uh, you know, we uh at a, a I, I said we were we were no longer a small ministry. We was a mid-sized ministry. You know, at that time we were doing uh about we had about two hundred, about two hundred plus, almost right about three hundred members uh at that time, you know. And at a short time frame, we'll be I mean, I mean strong. We had a strong ministry from top to bottom and doing a whole lot of things. And uh, you know, and, and you gotta know that we started out with eight and half of them were children. Remember I told y'all that. And God was just well, we just strong. And you know, uh um uh, there are times we're doing like uh fifteen thousand, twenty thousand uh, a month, you know, then tax season, man. You talking about sometimes we we didn't hit uh twenty some thousand dollars in one Sunday uh doing tax, you know, because I teach people. Uh, you know, you know uh, don't be coming with all that talking about I uh 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 I I I uh I done paid my tithes all year. No, you haven't and check them books. You know, <laughs> and then you don't you don't tie from your income tax. I, I teach you right, uh, Lord. That, that's a whole nother sub subject there. Before I'm, I'll get mad and run, and, and uh, so you, you, you got to give from all of that increase, and then everything you got on your taxes one what you uh, come over here. You got uh, most majority of your money came from earned income, so that uh, that's money you never never had access to. So that's increase. Uh, don't let me okay because we still struggling with we still struggling with that 10 percent, right uh, being consistent with it oh because we we sweating bullets about paying uh everybody else but 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 we figure out ways how to rob god oh i'm sorry oh jesus i'm, I'm sorry we become creative in our ways of robbing god you know i, I know folks that that rob God, I'm, I'm going to hit you. See, see, this opened up something. I, I, ain't, I ain't scared. 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 This ain't no popular lesson anyway, but because we got to deal with it. Uh, we indebted to God. Hey, y'all come on, talk to me. You know, I know people that they're tired, but they only, uh, uh, they think they're tired, but they still robbing God. Uh, what, well, how can you, uh, come on, Bishop, how can you be tired and rob God at the same time? Well, it's real simple. Let me, can, can I simplify it? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Uh, well, watch this. You only tied to God from one check because you got more than one stream of income. You might have two jobs. You might get some uh, 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 alimony check, a child support check. Or, you know, you got another stream of income. Whatever this stream of income is, uh, uh, you don't tie it on that one. Oh, 
So, so, so you're, uh, uh, you appear to be tidy, but you're robbing God at the same time. Boy, uh, shucks. Boy, I tell you, Holy Spirit always get me in trouble. Oh, Jesus. Come on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, Bishop ain't scared of you. I got to tell you the truth. And, and, and I, yeah, I got members that do that. They got more than one uh, stream of income, but they only tied off of one main income. That's it. All the other ones, they call that extra money. They call that the blessing. No. Uh, yeah, okay. Lord Jesus. See, see, I don't care. You found $20 uh, on the ground. That's increase. And so you need to tie it off that. Okay. Tie and offer. Okay. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay. Let me. Ah, uh, don't y'all don't, uh, don't call me out now. I got scripture to bag up. Uh, you know, the only one to be look. I, I I got I got uh people that's not committed to the Lord. Uh, uh would tie quicker than uh, than we got some folks. Uh, come on now, we got some folks. Uh, uh, that that come worship every Sunday. You know, I uh somebody had called me for some advice about a couple months ago. Matter of fact. And they're just having all kinds of financial problems. I said, well, I asked them, I said, are, are you faithfully tidy? Well, no, I hadn't did. I said, well, that's your problem right there. We ain't got to go no further. Are you you need to repent. <laughs> oh, oh, God, help me. Because people don't realize robbing God that the tide is sin. And, and I said, you need to repent. And then start where you at. Okay. Start tithing. And then they cut, start coming up with these, these excuses. Uh, okay, because, you know, I, uh, do I send my tithe to... To, to my church because I don't I, I haven't been going in a while. I said, well, I said, well, you can if that's what that's the that's the ground that you feel comfortable in sowing into. I said, but you need to sow uh uh bring them ties to wherever you being spiritually fed at. If you're no longer attending, no longer member there, no, you don't uh wherever you are attending and and wherever you being spiritually fed, that's where you uh do your ties. And uh of course y'all know they didn't do it. Then I think uh, they, uh, they had some kind of other problem, this and this and that. And, uh, Jesus. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, did you ever start, uh, start to tide? Well, no, cause this came up. I said, okay. I said, so when you get that right, the Lord said, when you get that right, then you will see everything he has laid out for you. Oh, I don't think, I don't, I, I ain't heard from him since then, but I, I don't think that, <laughs> I tell y'all now, I'm the wrong one. Look, I'm the wrong one to call to ask me about that kind of stuff. Uh, come on, if you already know, if you already know what your problem is, uh, and, and if I, I already gave you divine instruction that the Lord has given me, and then you call call me again about with the same issues, and then you did not do uh, the instructions that I gave you the first time, then I'm the wrong one. That's all I'm saying. I'm the wrong one because I'm gonna tell you straight. Uh, you know, cause you want the want advice from me. I know my time about up, Lord Jesus. Okay, come on. All right, got twelve minutes. Watch, watch, watch this. Huh? Oh, I, I, I'm 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 helping y'all uh, more than you realize. Okay, cause we know we got many that who have took uh, money that was supposed to be set aside for the Lord, and you went shopping with Christmas, and you did this and did that. Okay, I, I'm just saying. See, and then now you're going, now you got to call on the one you just robbed to help you to get out of debt. So if the creditors is going to call a uh, reckoning of, of the accounts, the money that you owe them, why do you think God won't? Okay. Oh, Jesus. Do I have an amen? I ain't getting no hearts tonight. I ain't getting, I, I just ain't no activity. Uh, tonight. Oh, I know this tough. I, you know, this is a hard conversation, but it got to be had. And I ain't just talking to y'all. I'm talking to myself too. I got. I have to show up on some things. Come on. I got to make sure that I got minds in order as well. But 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 this is a conversation that got to be had. So 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 watch this. Watch this. Lord have mercy. So I want you to think about the suffering you may bring upon your family through debt. All right. It may not be today, but definitely at some point in life. We got to think about that. You know, I want to make sure that's why that's why I'm, uh, I do other stuff. That's why 
uh, uh, other company. Matter, matter of fact, I got something else I'm launching along with what I'm already doing. But, bitch, how are you going to manage all them things? Well, you'd be surprised if you put things in order, decent order, and 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 uh, you'd be surprised uh, because we got to have multiple streams of income. I got I got to be take care of my I got to take care of my wife and uh, my children grown, but I know there'll be times I I have to help them out. Well, but I got to take care of my wife. I'm just saying at the end of the day. Uh, of course, she in school and doing her thing and and whatever uh, when she graduate, whatever she want to do, uh, I, I'm gonna be there fully supportive. But but my responsibility is to make sure that all of her needs are met. Period. Okay, we're not roommates. That's my that's my wife. Y'all come on. So there's a responsibility coming comes with marriage. Wow. Number three. <laughs> there gonna be a last one. We'll close this out today. Uh, uh, this one here. Okay, number three. You gotta face your mess. All right. Number one, your credit is going to ask for their money. Number two, <laughs> uh, Lord, Lord Jesus, uh, uh, that, this is real stuff. Uh, your debt's going to affect your family. So think about it next time when you go out there and get that boy toy. And, and you go out there, you got to think about uh, how much money it's going to take from the home. Now, if you prepare right and set up and, and save up for it and all that right there, then when you go get it, okay, okay, you're good. Because you you're not it's not hurting the home, because you uh, you properly uh, prepare for it, okay, and, and you got to think about it, you know oh I just got to get away you just bounce up just start doing all these trips out of nowhere can on uh, and then properly prepare for it you know them trips are expensive uh, you, you know uh, uh, the rental cars uh, the hotels and the rental cars are one that cost most of the money then you know in the evening uh, going somewhere ain't the issue. Uh, is is are you doing it in a timely way to where uh it's not hurting the home? What, what you mean, bitch, about hurting the home? You're taking um money out of the home that you need to pay bills with. So that's why when you do do these uh, the church and stuff, they got to be on this this emergency. Uh, you you got to make sure that 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 they are playing. So so you know, at the last minute going here, I'm just going. I, I worry about paying the rent when I get back. I worry about paying the car no get back. Then, then, then when you come back, then now you got a, a, a eviction notice on the door. Come on here. Now the, and now the repo man looking for you because I just had to get away. Now, now what, what, now what's going to happen is you're going, you're going to you gonna have to find out now to get away uh, uh, because you ain't got no transportation and you're going to God help me. And now you're going to have to, uh, God, shut that little go see. And now you're going to have to find somewhere to go uh, uh, because you don't have nowhere to live. Because you had to get away. <laughs> Y'all come on, talk to me. And, and watch this. You got to face your mess. What you said, bitch, that's number three. Uh, Mark, I mean, Matthew, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 18, verse 26. This is a New Living uh, Translation. It says, but the man fell down before his master and begged him, uh, please be patient with me and I will repay it all. Wow. So even though this parable calls this servant an unmerciful servant, there was one good thing he did. What was that? He faced his mess and then to run away from this situation. See, when we go filing bankruptcy, just for the sake of filing bankruptcy, we uh, change our phone numbers and we uh, uh, start dodging folks and don't tell them I'm here. Don't answer their phone. Hey, you know, don't not see. Oh, Lord. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Lord, have mercy. Now, now you're running and hiding from folks. You got to face your mess. Remember, we talked about this uh, last week. You got to, what, take responsibility. Uh, when, when And watch this. And so he took responsibility when he was confronted with his debt. All right? He did not look for who to blame. He didn't try to blame everybody. Uh, neither did he try to manufacture some some lies or excuses to present to the creditors. He didn't try to come up with no old lame stories. Though he ended uh, he ended poorly, 
He actually started well. See, he actually started well. So in dealing with your debt and creditors, you will be tempted to protect yourself with lies and deceit many times. You're just going to lie for the sake of it. No, no. So, so, so that's not the best way to do it. So unfortunately, any relief you get through lies would not last. All right. I want you to put that in the chat. Any relief you get through lies would not last. So don't try to uh, play smart with those you owe. Mm -mm, don't do it. Just be real with them. One thing my mom told me, I told you she only had sixth grade education, but she was smarter than I was. She always told me, uh, when you owe somebody, communicate with them. If you don't have it to pay them, you let them know you don't have it and let them know when you will have it and make sure you, uh, you give it to them when you get it. That, that that was some that was some uh great advice. My mom all told me that. And I might not have the money to pay you back right now, but I'm gonna pay you. I ain't forgot about it. I know I owe you. I know who I owe. As soon as my circumstances uh turn for the better and get better, I'm going to uh rectify what I owe. Come over here. So I know from folks, uh, uh, you know, I'm back to that tithe again. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You know, well, I'm going to pay it this week and then, but all you had to do is lay it aside. You used it. Spend it up. Then you come back act like ain't nothing ever happened. And then you start back tired. But what about what you, what you had? See, lay it aside. Don't y'all get mad at Bishop. I got, I got, I got to try to help you. Okay. And so she always said, communicate. I want you to put this on the chat. This in the chat. When you owe somebody, communicate. And I do the credit. I don't just I don't hide from them. Oh, I already know I gotta pay them. You know, you know, because we got a lot of them be calling all the time if you on. 30 cent, they're gonna call you. You know, we wanna know when you're gonna uh uh are you able to pay that 30 cent? Uh, today, <laughs> you said, man, you calling me, harassing me for 30 cents. Yeah, yeah, because you're still, uh, rightfully, it's still a debt, right? But I'm just saying the principle of the thing is that they will do that. They, they look, every, every, they try to get every dime. Okay? So, but always communicate. Let them know. Hey, look, I know I'm supposed to pay this and this, this, and during this time, I don't have it. So let me know whatever the late fee is. If you're going to charge me something late, uh, if you, you know, if you're going to, I give you some extra, whatever we come in agreement with this, if this from an individual, or, you know, from business, you are, most of the time they got a late charge. And, and you'd be surprised, uh, they might give you grace, what we call the grace period. And you thought you was late, but, but there was a grace period. And so you was able to go and make the payment during the grace period. And now you were not considered to be what? Be late. Boy, boy, boy this is some powerful stuff here. No more time is show. Well, watch this. Let me let me give you this, then we're through. All right. So as often uh, we say, don't try to cover, uh, uh, don't try to cover in your own way. All right. The shame that the Lord has not uh watch this here. Uh, the shame uh, that the Lord has not covered. So if you do, uh, watch this, God help me. So if you do, it will come back in other ways, multiply either uh, now or later. So whatever you try to cover up, going to come back and get you later. All right, so watch this here. So face your mess and look up to God for help. So always remember this, that God does not work in lies and deceit. I want you to put that in the chat. God does not work in lies and deceit. Always remember that. God does not work in lies and deceit. So we can never lie your way out. This ain't going to work. Stand in truth and God will see your humility and move the heart of the parties involved. 
I haven't seen it happen. I've been real with them. Look, I just don't have it, so and so, so and so. I tell you what, uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, don't worry about. It. I put this on the back end, and then uh, then I give you an extra month. Then they give you a chance to catch up. I'm t I'm telling y'all, God will do this thing. You will get some favor that'll fall on you. So so when I will uh, watch this because I do this, okay. Uh, and uh, when 4X Investments uh, business fail, okay, and I'm part of some that fail, uh, Lord have mercy. And, and and then you run into a huge, uh, huge debt because now it's money that you depended on, you're trying to make, all right? And then now you got creditors coming from all different directions, all right? And, and so you, you, you face a lot of shame and a lot of attack. And it comes. But be thankful that 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 you would never miss a meeting with uh never miss a meeting with them. Always talk to them anytime they want to talk. So you can work some things out. You'd be surprised. People will go out of their way to help you if you communicate with them. I'm just giving dropping some wisdom off. I know I gotta go. All right. But we gently uh uh and prayerfully follow through with everything. That's what you gotta do. Okay. So many a uh, many of our creditors uh uh, will begin to see that you ain't trying to follow them. See, when you stop not answering phone calls, you're not responding to emails when you're avoiding them, you're not calling them back when you said you was, you didn't make the payment when you said that you was, just because you couldn't make it, call them up and tell them, why well, I thought I was going, my check was going to be so-and-so, so-and-so amount, but it's not, and, and could, could y'all, can I give you this amount, and then next week i catch up with the rest. See, see, it's about communicating. Once they see that you're not trying to get over on them, I'm telling you, the advice my mama gave have blessed me, has gave allowed me to attain so much favor in a lot of situations when things are real bad. Communicate. And when they see that you're not trying to default, uh, defraud them, they'll work with you. I'm telling you, they will. They'll go out there. I had debt counsel because I, uh, I wasn't trying to run. I wasn't trying to avoid. Y'all, come on. I remember one time, I'll tell you this here. I, I remember one time we was in a building and uh, the note was probably in $2,000 a month because it, it, it increased when it extended our lease and stuff like that. And then, uh, man, things things started getting real tight. Uh, finances uh, had, had dropped. This was before the pandemic stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, people was inconsistent in their giving. And uh, at that time, uh, our biggest problem was at the Utility bill on, you know, the utility bill on the commercial buildings are very expensive. Residential uh, utilities is different than uh, rest uh, than commercial, and uh, we had since we had a large building, uh, we had two sides, and even though we turned into one building, but because they had a gas meters on both sides, so we had two utility bills that came in at the same time, and. Uh, what our struggle was paying the utility bills, you know, got one side with the biggest side with the big, big area units and stuff. It was, uh, it was like, uh, seven, 800, sometimes thousand dollars a month. Then I got the other one, uh, uh, the other bill about six, uh, about 500, 600 a month. Uh, you know, and they do it at the same time. And, you know, then the time 2000, you know, so man, and so what we was, uh, on the budget. Uh, man, I'm telling you. And, uh, so, you know, once you get in a hole, it's kind of hard get behind. Then you got to, then they still want you to pay this and pay that. And, and what I did was I, I always communicated. And I'm telling y'all that, that gave us so much favor, uh, to where I was consistent in what I was able to give them. And, and because of that, they called a meeting with me. Watch this here. And uh, I'm telling the church, I got to go meet with the uh, with the uh, uh, people that own the building and this and this and that. I said, we're going to be all right. How are we going to do it? And watch this here. Um, they uh, can. And the secretary, the financial secretary was there in the meeting. She had called me and told what was going on and, and had some other people wanted to the other owners because it was a partnership. They wanted to put us out. And figure that they could uh, they could come in and they can rent it out to other people and get 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 all the money for whatever. Matter of fact, I think the building is still vacant. <laughs> you know, we no longer in there now, but about the, but the building is still vacant. 
and uh, law, it was just crazy. Um, so I explained to them what the situation was, how the utility bills were carrying on, this and that. Uh, so they uh, tried to work with me on some things, and and but the financial secretary uh, uh, stood up for me in the meeting. I ain't I ain't had said nothing. Uh, she showed him how uh, this is how much he pay every week. I mean every month. He ain't even though it's not the full amount, but he comes in. I don't have to call him. I don't have to look for him. Um, and uh, he's very consistent. And this was the financial lady that took care. I mean, sp spoke of me, and she said, "You know, we got many uh, uh, people that's in our buildings. Uh, most of the time, don't pay at all, or they run and dodge, and they always late. But uh, Pastor Williams always pays." And and he said, "Okay, I said this. We'll get back with you." And watch this here. I get a phone call, come back and say, "Well, Pastor, I tell you what, we're going." Uh, since that's what you consistently able to pay, and we see that we get that from you with no problem. Uh, Honda, that it Uh Watch this. He says, how about if we uh, just lower your rent down to that amount that you pay, and so that way you be paying on time, and don't worry about all the other parts that you owe me. I'm, okay, I'm gone. I, I'm, I'm dropping the mic. I'm gone. See? And that came from the blessing of communicating. I just want to share that with y'all. And see, the favor of God, because I communicated, uh, and I'm there on, boom. See? And that's what they did. <laughs> and they didn't put me in no smaller building. I still have everything. And our biggest issue was just the utilities bill. The utilities bill just got so great. To where I had to let the building go. Because uh, I had tried to do both of them at the same time. It was draining all the money. And and so so watch this. And so uh, uh, how it got so bad was that because uh, sometimes the amount was so much. Uh, and, and we ain't there all the time. It's just uh, commercial uh, uh, fees are greater than residential. Okay. And because of that, um, um, sometimes I had to make arrangements with utility company and uh that means i gotta split they, they don't give you a whole lot of time basically give you an extra week so that means i end up paying utility bill because i have paid both sides i had to pay utility bill uh four times a month you know it didn't start out that way but it's how it ended up so i knew it was, it was time for us to let the bill and go because that's that's where things had ended up to. All of a sudden, our bills, our utility bill just started increasing. They raising the rates and all that stuff. Uh, and so uh, that's, you know, I've been trying with y'all to let y'all know some things about the ministry. Uh, ain't no joke. And everybody be thinking that, that, that the pastors be trying to get money, trying to get this and that. Now we're trying to take, we're trying to keep our ministry afloat so we can do ministry. And so everybody can be blessed. And so I had to pay utility bill four times a month, basically, because I made arrangements on both. You know, and I had to pay it. If I didn't pay it, they cut them off. We couldn't afford for the lights to get cut off. Then, because we couldn't do this and couldn't do that. And, uh, you know, then still trying to pay the other bills and all that stuff. You know, so it was crazy. And, yes, uh, I uh, sacrificed my salary, gave up my salary, trying to keep things, this and that. And that's that's why I was doing uh, marketing stuff and do other stuff online to make sure I didn't take care of my home. Uh, you know, because I couldn't get, uh, at that time, it just wasn't good to get no salary from church because I'm trying to make things happen until we was able to recover see uh so um you know those are things you got to understand <laughs> but communicating uh god dropped faith on us amen so so face your situation face the situation with confidence that god will make uh make a way somehow that's what he did all right communicate with your people you didn't get anything else uh, tonight i pray that you got that i know i ran over but i just wanted to share that testimony with you somebody might encourage somebody okay Praise the Lord. Well, look, we thank God for you. Come on back tomorrow. We're going to uh, we're going to give you some more things here and we're going to show you how to deal with it. OK, uh, we're going to do a dip on this all this week uh, uh, and uh, as preparing for a new year uh, uh, service and all those things there. Amen. Love you. Appreciate you. Um, pray all this well with you. Pray you blessed tonight. Uh, of course, want to remind that you never be broke. 
that are in your life, all your needs are met over and above. Increase the stature of wisdom, favor with God and with man. Because I am Bishop Tommy L. Williams, Senior, better known as the Relief Doctor, proud pastor of the Keys of the Kingdom, International Ministry, right here in Memphis, Tennessee, and the Word on the Move, Tabernacle Church there in West Memphis, Arkansas. We love you. Appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Be blessed.